He has a think. Meanwhile, there's a very different dynamic on our other semi-finals matchup. We see an end game where White has a bishop pair. Black's pawn structure a little bit loose. We see three pawn islands for black, two for white. In general, having the bishop pair in an open position, you feel it's better. But to me, the lack of development in white's pieces would compensate for that. I'm just hating that pin on that knight on f6. Yeah, black needs to break the pin. That's uh, the most urgent factor in this position. Look at Fabiano, his body language right now. It looks urgent in itself. And uh, it looks like he knows this is a critical moment. He needs to get rid of white's dark squared bishop. You need to kick it away, simply. Black's knight on e6 cannot take it. There's a pin on the e-file. There's a pin on the diagonal. And therefore, move one of the rooks across or use a pawn. Use the black h6 pawn to kick away white's piece. And if we do see a bishop for knight trade, if white's dark squared bishop has to trade off on f6, Fabi will breathe a sigh of relief. He needs to act quickly, though. I'm looking at the clock. I'm looking at the position. It's definitely momentum white right now. It is, and I'm with you that you have to get rid of the dark sword bishop. And even after that, it's still better for white because the healthier pawn structure that Tanya mentions. The opposite colored bishops, when there are no other pieces remaining, often it's going to be a draw, even if one side has an extra pawn. But with rooks and a knight on the board as well, we could see an attack, especially if that black king is drawn out to the f6 square. So advantage Magnus on the clock, advantage Magnus on the board. It's going to be an endgame grind. Will Magnus? Magnus his way through this one. Even if the bishop pairs are gone, as uh, Robert, you're pointing out, and David, you as well, that white will be able to get that second rook into the attack from the F-file really quickly once black's king is pulled forward after the trade. So this endgame, it might look, Lebar says it's level, but it does have more poison than what meets the eye. It does, certainly. Fabiano did not make the decision we were talking about now on the left board of our screens. He moves the black rook across instead, but this only encourages White's king to park itself on a much safer square. And I'm assuming that Magnus Carlsen on that left board will shuffle the king closer to the corner. White's king will step to b1, and then it's a quick comparison. White's king safer than black's king. White's pieces more active than black's pieces. Advantage Magnus Carlsen. And uh, in the meantime, on the left board of our screens, Abdu Satorov throws another pawn into the mix. All of Black's pieces at work in that board. White's king, White's pieces, they look like easy targets. It's still Wesley so in big, deep trouble. And Wesley was able to win Nordebeck's queen uh, excuse me, sacrificed his own queen. Nordic took Wesley's queen in an earlier game. Here it looks like something similar could happen. That if on the right-hand side of our screen, Wesley takes this pawn on c5, which he just does, look at Nordic. He's not taking that pawn back. He's taking the other pawn in the center. But this isn't uh, an imitation of game two. Unlike that one, Wesley's king is in trouble. So it's a similar peace dynamic, yeah. but it's not peaceful because White's king is unsafe. Yeah, really interesting that queen versus rook and a minor piece. We see a similar thing. And now Nordebeck has made a move which the bar disapproves. It's the most natural looking move to me. Does this give Wesley the opportunity to capture that a7 pawn, which you can easily forget about? I think he's relying on a trick here, Abdu Satorov, but he's missed a trick of his own. If pawn takes pawn, if white pawn captures on a7 on that right board black's queen can slide the whole way across the board to a4 and deliver a check black's queen will check the white king and actually save the day the a file is covered but white can prevent that by first playing rook to d4 rook white's rook sliding up to the center here and now in this position the fact that wesley has paused means he's likely to see this Ooh. and once the black queen is kicked away from the fourth rank then pawn takes pawn white is about to make a new queen abdu satorov has lost control this is a critical moment. If Wesley so finds rook to d4, blocking out, shutting out that queen on the queen's king side, and he does find it. Wesley so is missing nothing today. Great find from Wesley and a horrible oversight from Nodibek. It happens to all of us, but look at how much time Nodibek has left on his clock. I've talked about how he punishes his opponent by keeping control on the clock he played too quickly there and now wesley has a fighting chance and maybe not just a chance he might be better i actually might prefer the white side if i can take that pawn on a7 the next turn that's an annoying pass pawn that blacks have to deal with and black's king itself is not safe and black will have to move up with the king to stop that pawn from promoting to a8 once the queen moves back white captures the a7 pawn black will have to stop it from promoting to a queen which will give wesley time to capture the f3 pawn 
Yeah, Abdus Satorov, this is his uh, biggest strength, but maybe also one small weakness in his game. He relies on calculation. He backs everything up concretely. He always wants to play the most active, ambitious moves. He didn't need to, though. He'd already pocketed Wesley's queen. He could have just simply captured that white pawn off the board, the white pawn that now sits on b6 that's about to go closer to promotion. He could have taken it two moves ago. We would be arguing about the same position, but with black in full control. Instead, we're talking about Wesley about to make a new queen, about to promote, just as he did in the previous game. And uh, a material breakdown, white has a rook, white has a bishop, and white's about to have the strongest pawn on the board. Yes, black has a queen, but that's not the most important factor anymore. Abdus Satorov inside, he's going to be kicking himself. And Black's king will not be safer than White's on the right-hand side of the board. Uh, Wesley's king has been running. Now it's hidden. It has some shelter. The Black king will not receive uh, so many pieces in front of it because you've already traded off many. And on the left-hand side of our screen, we just saw a trade where Fabiano, he gives up his bishop for a knight. So it's an advantage for Magnus. Healthier pawn structure on the left-hand side of our screens here where Black has those three pawn islands, isolated pawns, and the F and H files, and the light square bishop that can start poking at him. I've seen Magnus win countless positions with uh, a small strategic advantage, better pawn structure, better minor piece, Magnus in control. It's what we would call a two-result game. Really flashy move here. Magnus on the left board, moving his rook up, swinging it across. The rook is untouchable because Black's knight in the center is pinned. Magnus, he's having all the fun. If Fabi defends well, it's going to be a draw, but almost zero chance of Black winning that one. And with that a rook lift, what Magnus wants to do is try and provoke more weaknesses on the queen side by sliding it all the way across. Fabi preempts it, makes the move b6. Meanwhile, Nodebeck still in the thing. It's clear that rook d4 was missed by him. Yeah, not a doubt. Abdus Satorov took a long think there. The black queen has moved away. The only black queen remaining on either board right now. And Wesley is about to establish a monster pawn. Look at that white a pawn now, the new A pawn about to promote, about to land a touchdown. Black King has to move. But the problem is, no matter where the Black King moves on the right hand side board, that the King is walking into a dark square diagonal that the Bishop on B2. It's been a bad piece all game, but it is going to have its fun because if you go to G7, we have a full diagonal from that Bishop on B2 all the way to a King on G7. But no, he gives a check and the evaluation bar is going up, up, and away. Why can't White just move the Bishop and block that check? Oh, maybe the answer is you can move the bishop, even if you sidestep the king. I'm not sure what uh, Abdus Satorov is aiming for with this check. Wesley So doesn't have too much time, under two minutes, but he has, for the first time in this game, a superior position. I mean, I'm just thinking about what you said. Abdus Satorov, what does he have in mind? If the bishop does move forward, he's threatening to queen on the next move. He's attacking black's queen on the other side of the board. The only trick you can set up is of discovered checks by grabbing that bishop with your own knight and relying on the tactics that when white promotes, and I think we're going to see this play out, knight takes bishop, white promotes the queen, move up with your king, attack the white queen, and you're threatening to discover checks. Wow, Abdus Satorov might have tricked Wesley, so he lured him in with the bait. White has made a new queen, so I said there was only one queen remaining on either board. Suddenly white has a queen on that uh, right board, but the queen is attacked in the corner on a8 by Black's Rook, and the threat of uh, this discovery against White's king could be terminal. Wesley's new queen drops back, walking into <laughs> the firing line here. Something is lining up. Look at that white king. It's about to be checked left, right, and center, but Wesley, is he surviving? Big West question. Wesley on the right-hand side is up a rook at the moment, but that knight can actually deliver a check on f2, and then it, the queen hits the king, the knight hits the rook on h1. So I'm just trying to keep count of all the pieces on the right-hand side, and quick note on the left-hand side is Magnus just made his move. Fabiano is defending this perfectly. Every square that Magnus puts pressure on, Fabiano has it covered. The h5 pawn is defended, the e6 knight is defended, so Fabiano is doing everything correctly on the left-hand side, and he still has a minute on his clock. But Magnus is going to continue to try to squeeze uh, water out of stone there with the bishop versus knight complex, pawns on both sides of the board. He's going to play this on Fabi down to a minute. He needs to keep those defenses up. Can Nordebeck find the big check here? And he decides to go with knight f2, uh, attacking that rook. First question, where are you moving with your king? You've got to slide to the right or you've got to slide back. And he slides back to c1, a safe square, and white's rook disappears in the corner. I've got to say, all the drama is happening on the board between Wesley So and Abdus Satorov. It's one of the craziest games you'll ever see. New pawns promoting halfway through a game. Rooks disappearing in the corner. We do a material count. We see suddenly 
It is almost level. White is up a pawn after all of that mess, but the attack continues against the white king, potentially. And the black king is really not that safe either, because if you could imagine the c3 pawn on the right-hand side of your screen, if that was thrown off the board, that bishop on b2, it's just lurking back there, and there could be threats. But I think that Notre can just take this knight on g3. The pawn will recapture, and the queen can take that pawn. It's becoming messy. The material will be even, but I like Notre clock the most. Whoa. Whoa! No, that was a oh. that was a DGT error. There's no <laughs> way Wesley would push a pawn instead of recapturing. That sometimes happens. Look, that bishop's alive. I love that last move by Wesley. He pushes the C pawn. It doesn't aim at queening or moving forward, but it's all to activate that bishop on B2, which to me is a very scary piece. I don't care what the eval bar says. That bishop on B2 eyeing that black king on G7. I'd be worried in this position. Yeah, Wesley forgot to play b3 on move one, fearing Ketwing his dark square bishop. But finally, now on move 28, he's activated that beast, that monster, that archer, uh, that sniper from afar. That white dark square bishop is the most valuable piece right now. But it's all about the checks. It's all about the mutual attacks. And Black's king steps forward, hiding out in the open on a light square. And Wesley drops back with his rook, whose king is weaker. It's so difficult to tell. The players are now down. Under the two-minute mark, this one is chaos. It's going in any direction. What a move from No Dearback Abdul Sattar. King up to G6. I was not at all looking at that. I think he can just steal this pawn on F3. And then he can always block a check on the G file with his knight. So I believe that No Dearback, can, he can take the pawn F3, get a bit closer to the white king. And what a brave decision by him. He gives a check instead. Did we see him move? Oh, that was Magnus Carlsen. I think he's still thinking about it. I was thinking, give a check and get the queens off the board. Your king is on g6. If Nodebek Abdu Satrov, he can grab a pawn. He can give a check. He chooses a third option. He doesn't care. His king is up in the open. He's going for the c-pawn. Wesley rightly sidesteps any checks on the c-line, moves away, and Nodebek goes pawn hunting. No queen trades. He's a pawn up. Nodebek here adds black. Both kings are equally weak right now, but Black also has two passed pawns on that board. Uh, Abdu Satorov, I think he's a big favorite. The Black H pawn will just start running. Meanwhile, the Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana board, still level, still Magnus trying to probe away for weaknesses, still looking to dominate the Black Knight with the White Bishop. But wow, Wesley, so let's focus on this one on the right, because that's where the money matches. <sighs> Oh my goodness, queen g7 check is a threat. That knight cannot capture the queen. And that's why Wesley slid his king to the corner so the black queen can't deliver a useful check. And I think that for Nordirbeck, he's bring his rook back. He does just that. That h-pawn is really dangerous. It was a one-check threat. That has been stopped. Nordirbeck's about to run that pawn up the board. And this is White's moment to try to perhaps get more pieces into the attack. That knight on a3, only if it lands on the king side, it will give Wesley the chances that he needs. And he starts with his journey, knight b5, heading to the center of the board with knight d4 coming in. Wow, the computer, the evaluation bar might say that black is better. Abdu Satorov has the advantage, but in practical terms, the white king suddenly safe in the corner. And Wesley, I think he's got great chances of turning it around. Both players around the 40-second mark. And uh, now big threat against White's Rook. He gives a check first, Wesley, so... But the room. bishop can block it? Brave check there, forcing the White Ooh. Queen into the corner. And meanwhile, on the other board, the evaluation bar shoots up. Magnus Carlsen, is he winning? Can Magnus trade off the Rooks? He's won a pawn, Magnus Carlsen. Caruana's defenses are cracking. Yeah, the rooks are gone, and that's an extra pawn. It can run up the board. So while all attention was on Nordebeck's board, suddenly Magnus Carlsen steals a pawn, and I think he's going to win game three. Just do not play Magnus Carlsen in end games. It is bad news, and he does it. He creates his magic. But let's focus on the right side of the board right now. Rook to e8. Queen e4, putting that queen back on h1 by Wesley. So to me, that was a really surprising call. Well, Danny knows all about that, playing the scotch and then you're getting your queen stuck on H1. So, Danny, there's your shout-out. But right now, Nordirbeck deserves a huge shout-out the way he's been playing. And Wesley's down under 10 seconds. Seconds, absolute chaos. Is the Black King going to march up further on the board? But you have to stay connected to that H5 pawn. What is Nordirbeck thinking about? Is he going to capture the bishop on B2? Wow. He does it! And checkmate within two moves is threatened. Abdu Satorov going for the White King now. Wesley keeping oh. things alive with a nasty move. What a sick move from Wesley on the right-hand side. That lo rook looks like it's free, but if you take that rook, knight back to h4 with check. We are seeing a repetition. I don't think Notre has better. Wesley, so what oh. a find. Rook to g2. That has to be the move of the day. But right now, three seconds, and he captures oh. the knight. Notre is going for it. He doesn't repeat because that's not an option on the table. 
Wow, Nodebeck, a draw and a loss is the same thing. So he keeps the game alive. He doesn't repeat. But now it's a material imbalance. White has a rook. Meanwhile, okay, Magnus does take the win in his game. Pass pawn running through. But Wesley has a rook for Black's knight and two pawns. That one, anything could still happen. Our remaining game. And look at that. Nodebeck throws his pawn even further. Please take my pawn. Your rook is hanging on Joe. Wesley down under five seconds. He slides his rook to help defend his queen. But those pawns are looking awfully scary. Ooh, and another track. The 